Hi, I'm just doing a quick follow up to the Quick 861X review and I wanted to have a look to see what was causing the lights in the lab to flicker when this was being used, whereas on the other hot air stations that I've got, I didn't notice that. So what I've done is I've hooked this up to my Hameg programmable power meter and then that is connected to the picoscope and what we can do is look at the voltage and current waveforms. We can also look at the power waveform as well if we wanted to and see exactly how this is driving the heating element and then I thought we could have a quick look at the other stations and see what they're doing. So the power meter is sitting at the back there. We've got the current clamp on as well. We've got the output which shows the power and then we've got one of the McSig differential probes looking at the voltage waveform. Right, so first of all, let's test the quick 861X. So I'll take the handle out the cradle. And you can probably see we're getting pulses all over the place. Let's zoom in slightly. So what we're seeing here is basically half cycle by half cycle control. Ignore the overshoots, it's because it's using a current clamp. We're not measuring the current directly, but we're doing basically half cycle by half cycle control. So it's literally just pulsing on for one half of a cycle whenever it needs a little bit of extra heat. Next up, we'll look at the best BST863. So I'll take it out of the cradle. And what we're seeing this time is much wider blocks of current being drawn. It does still look like we're seeing half cycle by half cycle control, but generally speaking what it seems to be doing is doing much wider blocks rather than just pulses all over the place. You can see here we're not getting any random pulses in the middle. It generally is constrained to quite a wide block of current being drawn. Let's try the quick 857DW+. Plus. And this looks quite similar to the 861. Let's zoom in. And yeah, we're seeing exactly the same type of control. So half cycle by half cycle control on this one. Finally, we'll just have a look at what the Metcal HCT900 looks like. As you can see, the amplitude is much lower on this one, about half the amount of power. And we're seeing a similar story. So we're seeing regular pulses of power being drawn. Let's have a closer look at the waveform. And this appears to be much friendlier. So we're seeing complete blocks of current, no half cycle control. It's just probably counting how many cycles it should be on for. And this one doesn't cause the lights to flicker at all. So what we're essentially seeing here is that these quick hot air stations are doing half cycle by half cycle control, which is generally harsher on the AC supply. So no mains filter in this is going to help with the flickering of the lights. It is exacerbated by the fact that the lights in this room are powered from the same outlet strip as what I've got these plugged into. And I'm also a relatively long distance away from the consumer unit. So I'm probably on the furthest wing away from where the consumer unit is. So we are seeing a little bit of voltage drop, especially when we're seeing high current loads like this quick 861 on here. And if we have another quick look at the picoscope, you can actually see any of the waveforms where we're getting a current draw, we are seeing some voltage drop. We're seeing about 20 or 30 volts there from the peak. So the RMS voltage is down a little bit from there. And it would appear that the LED lights in my lab are sensitive to that little bit of voltage drop and it's causing them to flicker. So that's a little bit of clarity on what's going on with these units. You can see why these quick hot air stations are getting a bad name for causing lights to flicker because the duration is very short and very noticeable by eye when you see a little bit of change in brightness in lights. In contrast, the Metcal is delivering current over a much wider period and therefore you're not seeing that flickering occurring quite so rapidly and therefore it generally goes unnoticed by the eye. I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing something a little bit more clever like phase angle control or something like that that delivers a more constant power into the heating element, but you will have harmonics 
created by chopping the waveform into pieces, especially with high current devices like these. What would be nicer is if at least these did one complete cycle instead of the imbalanced cycle because that is not good to the grid either. So I hope you found the video useful and until next time, thanks for watching.